Hey guys, welcome to Shire School Studios. It's Raven Wolf. We're back with another Friday deck list. Uh, going back to making another Enchantress deck because this commander just got spoiled. And uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different one. We're doing five color Enchantress. It's going to be pretty interesting. I don't know how it will play because of how colors and stuff will go. It's basically going to be a mix of my Enichthia deck that if you have not seen... Please go check that one out. And my Attracts Enchanter deck, which is just an upgraded version of Enichthia, but with copy enchantments. So, Enichthia with blue. So, this one will basically be the same thing. Making copies of certain enchantments multiple times. All the shenanigans. Also, guys, if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe for more stuff in the future. Or comment down below about any ideas to improve the deck, what you would like to add, or maybe something you don't think is good in the deck to check out. And then, uh, go ahead, the deck list will be down below, so you can always check it out on Moxfield. Um, I have all my deck lists on there. And check out some of my other videos. And, uh, getting into it, we're going to go Jewel Commander, because the English version was not, so we had to look at a translated one. Going to Mythic Spoiler, we have Marina Vendril. One of each color, Human Warlock, Winners, reveal the top 7 cards of your library, put all enchantment cards, reveal this one into your hand, and the rest in the bottom, in a random order, open or close target room you control, activate only as a sorcery, we're not going to care about that one at all, we mostly care about her one ability, basically we're going to look at the top 7, get the best enchantments, or get all of them, but yeah, that way we can kind of dig through our deck, get the enchantments we need, put them on the battlefield, hopefully do some ETB triggers and all the bunch of shenanigans. So let's get into it. So we have our commander. Going into it, we have Invasion of Theros, which is we'll search a library for an aura god or demigod, put it into our hand, then shuffle. It's a battle that if we flip it, um, we get a Farah ever sheltering. That... Um, she has lifelink indestructible as long as you control at least three other enchantments. Which we will be doing. And whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw one card. So with that, we're still going to get card advantage. For our planeswalkers, we have Aminatu to flicker our enchantment creatures. We have Kallax that will help us dig for creatures. He is also removal. And he is also um, graveyard recursion. Asteroid is going to protect all our, uh, some of our permanents, and if we also do um, her plus two, we can put those enchantments on our lands and then ramp out. Venser is going to be a slow flicker, and he's also like a minus one for creatures can't be blocked, which is a win con. If we ever get to the minus eight, which people will kill him before he gets there, it's just whatever at that point, it shouldn't matter. But mostly the plus two just to flicker our enchantment creatures, get back our instep, hopefully do some more shenanigans. For our creatures, we have Adrix and Nev Twin Casters, because we're going to be making copies of our tokens. This one will make twice that many instead. We have Aminatu Veil Piercer. This will make um, the first enchantment we... If we draw an enchantment, it's our first card drawn each turn. Recast that enchantment for its miracle cost. So we can uh, hopefully get some cheaper enchantments out. And Nick there, Hand of Erebos. We're going to automatically know what he does if you've seen my other enchantment or sex. She's going to be exiling enchantment from our graveyard, making a creature version of it. Astral Dragon is going to make copies of our um, non-creature permanents. Hey, those are enchantments. And I'll uh, make creature versions of them. We've Atheros got a passage, so when our creatures die, our enchantment creatures die, or uh, some of our other pieces, we can hopefully get them back. Oromancer for Grave Recursion. Bloom Tinder for Mana Ramp. We have a lot of multicolored permanents. Calafi, Blood of the Sea, is to protect our permanents. Displace a Kitten for Flickering. Doomweg Giant for uh, one side board wipes against our opponents. For your, uh, when it it enters, or another enchantment enters the battlefield. All your opponent's creatures get minus one, minus one. 
And um, basically with this, uh, if we can keep flickering and stuff like that, it will keep stacking until end of turn. We have Enduring Vitality, which will turn our creatures into Mana Dorks, which we kind of need for a five-color deck. And when it dies, it comes back with, as just an enchantment. It loses the creature type. So that's even more shenanigans there that we can do. Afara God the Polis. With our flickering and stuff like that, um, she will get us to draw cards. Eska God the Tree is a mana dork, but we also have the Prismatic Bridge, which is the better option. Because um, at the beginning of our upkeep, we're going to reveal until we hit a Flameswalker or a creature, put it on the battlefield. We have Eternal Witness, which is Graveyard Recursion. Fear of Burning Alive. When it enters, it deals 4 damage to each opponent. When a sorcery control deals non-combat damage to an opponent. And if we have Delirium, it deals that much damage to target creature that player controls as well. Mostly, it's the ETB ability. That's what we're going to be doing with it. Fear of Infinity. Uh... Basically, it's an enchantment we can get back, so we can get cast enchantment triggers or uh, enter enchantment triggers. Forgeborn Oriads. This with Burning Alive, um, pretty good synergy, but this one will deal damage to our creature or player. Heal of the Radiant Sun is a graveyard recursion for our enchantments. And if we were to flip it over, we can cast spells at flash speed, and our spells cast one less for each spell our opponents have cast that turn. Quiz of Glimmer will make our enchantment spells cost one less. Duke High Naturalist makes our enchantments cost one less as well. We have Mogus, God of the Slaughter, which will, on our opponent's turn, they either deal two damage or unless they sacrifice a creature. So that one will pressure our opponent some more. Moldrotha will help us cast enchantments and creatures from our graveyard mostly. Oh, we uh, need to take that out. I'll add another enchantment. I, there might be something I can add, probably. Uh, Undo Spirit Dancer. When it enters the battlefield under your control, may create a token that's a copy of it. Do this only once each turn. Again, making copies. Uh, Overlord of the Bell Merc. Uh, basically, we're going to mill cards, and then we get a, a creature or a Planeswalker card to our hand. So our other enchantment creatures or our Planeswalkers. Uh, Overlord of the Boil Boiler Bilges. Enters the battlefield, deals 4 damage to any target. It also has an impending. But this also with... Uh, the burning, fear of burning alive also does more shenanigans. Overlord of the Haunt Woods. Mostly, this is a card I really love. I really, really hope I can get one of these. Especially the anime art for this card. It is, enters or attacks create a taps colorless land named everywhere that is every basic land type. So it gives, it basically, is, it's going to give us a command tower. Is what this will do. So imagine this with flickering or making copies of it or all the shenanigans that this deck wants to do. We're making lands. Perforous God of the Forge. When our creatures are flickered or come out, deal damage to our opponents. Sanctum Weaver for mana. Sit this is going to be for card, uh, card draw and life gain for casting our enchantments. Thassa Deep Dwelling for flickering. Yenna is to make copies of our enchantments. Xur is to give our enchantment creatures... Um, Death Touch, Lifelink, and Hexproof. So we can protect a lot of our pieces. Going to our sorceries, we have Rite of Lepication to make copies. Spitting Image to also make copies. We have Dawn's Truce and Heroic Intervention for uh, protection. For artifacts, the Arcane Signet, Chromatic Lantern make our land command towers. And Conjurer's Closet to flicker. For our enchantments, we have Aura Shards for removal. We have Battle of the Hell Vault for removal. Battle of Bregard is to make copies of our enchantments. Binding the Old Gods is removal. Coffee Unleashed is a board wipe. Caretaker's Talent is for token um, synergies. 
It'll also give us card draw. Copy enchantment. So give us a copy of enchantment we have. Defiled Crypt is one of the new ones. When one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a 2-2 enchantment. It only happens once per turn, which will be easy for us to do. And then when we unlock the door, target creature, return to our creature card from our graveyard to your hand. So basically what's going to happen is if we were to flicker this or make a copy with Anicthia, um, it would come in as a filed crypt and we pay the one black to copy it and then we get creatures from our graveyard it's back to our hand. Pretty, pretty, I think it would be pretty decent with this deck. Doubling season, the double or tokens. Enchanted evening, this will make all our stuff enchantments so we could even make more copies and more copies of dumb stuff. Extravagant Replication will make copies of any permanent that's a non-land. Fable the Mirror Breaker. This with our token generators will make us the 2-2 two -two goblins and on the attack give us more treasures. So it would be even more ridiculous. Gives us card advantage. And if we ever to flip it, boom, create a copy that's a create a token that's a copy of another target on a your creature you control except it has haste. Sack it. So this, going with some of these, will be freaking insane. Grasp of Fate is for removal. Impact Tremors is to burn our opponents. Leyline and Mutation. Funny enough, this is to hopefully try and cheat out some of our stuff. Leyline of the Guild Pact is to make our lands basically command towers. And to make our stuff all colors. So Bloom Tender basically taps for five colors. Mirror Maid is a cop coming as a copy of any artifact or enchantment. Parallel Lives, double our tokens. Parallel's position is for protection. Teleportation circle to flicker. Three blind mice is to make more copies of uh, our stuff. And then for an enchantment we wanna add. Um, there's a bunch of stuff we could do to add to the deck, but I think we might need more removal. I can look right quick through some of my other stuff. What would be a good card to add? Maybe even a red enchantment? Because, let me see here. You know what? We're going to do this. We're going to do another board wipe in the deck. Extinguish. All hope. There we go. So now we have another board wipe in our deck. To hopefully slow down uh, our opponents. And we have enchantment creatures. So it does not matter at that point. Alright. Now going to the lands. I tried to make the lands as balanced as possible, but it's really weird because of how the division is in our five colors. Bountiful Promenade for our Bond Lands. Breeding Pool for a Shock, Command Tower. Exotic Orchard, because of course. Three Forests, a Glacial Fortress. Godless Shrine. Hinterland Harbor. Um, uh, and Glacial Fortress are Shack Lands, Godless Shrine is a Shock. And Dotha Triome, because of Triome. Two islands, a Jetmere's Garden for another Triome, one mountain, one overgrown tomb for a shock, three plains, reflecting pool, uh, rejuvenating springs for a bond lance, rare quarry tower for uh, if we just have a busted hand, rootbound crag for check land, spars headquarters, stomping ground for a shock, sunpell grove for a check, two swamps, a temple garden for a shock, Erberg. To help out with our um, some of our check lands. And Yavimile Cradle Growth to also help out with our check lands. It's a Goth Triome for a Triome and the Atoros Proving Ground. Now I'm also going to make this the cheapest it can be. 716 is still inexpensive but a lot of these cards are also in the Estra deck and in the uh, Anicthia deck. So, remember, like, if you ever pick those up before, you'll have a lot of these. That's probably going to be the expensive version, to be honest. 
All right, going down into it, we're going to play test it. But yeah, guys, like I said, please tell me what y'all think. I'm probably not going to keep this hand. Let's go ahead and mulligan that away. Mulligan that away? That was like no lands. We're getting no lands here. What in the world is happening? You know what? There's lands. So we'll draw for turn one. Jet Mirror's Garden. Next turn, um, Glacial will come in untapped because of Jet Mirror's Garden. We can't do anything yet. Let's just go ahead and turn three. This is going to be a very slow deck, I will warn y'all. Uh, we'll do Yavamaya. And we'll do three line mice. Making a mice. There we go. We make our thing. Uh, add a counter. No, I can tell. Our next turn, we'll go ahead and we'll do forest. Oh, wait. This has to go off. Add a counter. Token. Mouse token. Then we do that. Then we'll do a fara. And I forget if that's how that works or not. Does she check? Yeah, she checks on the X upkeep, which would have seen a uh, creature enter. So our, on the next turn, our opponent's turn, we draw a card. And then on our turn, we get a land. Now with this, we could do Heliod. Nah, I don't want to do Heliod. Could do Leyline of Mutation, but it's not going to help us. So let's do Undo Spirit Dancer. And then on our opponent's turn, we draw. And then our next turn... Alright, cool. We do a Command Tower. With that, we're going to leave Command Tower untapped. We're going to do Pillar's Position. And we're going to make a copy of it. There we go. So on turn 6, all our stuff is hexproof. Oh, I forgot to do that. Add counter. We create a mouse token. And our next turn, this will go to the grave. But we can get it back with Heliod. And at that point, we're going to start just making copies of Pillow's positions. It's going to be hilarious. Do we have, we're, we're missing a black for Moldrotha. But yeah. And then our next turn, our opponent's turn, we draw a card. And then on our turn, now we have a Bloom Tender. But now we have, oh no, we have all colors. So we could easily do our Commander... Dig for more enchantments. Oh, that goes to the grave. Go to the grave. So we can do our commander. Dig, but we don't have max hand size yet. So it's not the best idea. Uh, we could do a bloom tinder for mana. And do something like a uh, conjurer's closet for a flicker. Get more draw. We could do heliod. Get three blind mice back. We'll make more copies of Pillow's position. Especially because our opponents can't really touch Andre Spirit Dancer unless they board wipe. Let's go ahead and restart. You know what? Sure, let's keep this hand. I'll gamble. Zia Taurus Proven Grounds. Turn 2. An Exotic Orchard. Which is just what our opponents would tap for. I'm going to say it's a Reflecting Pool. Just to make it fair. Uh, turn 2. We cannot do anything. So our... Turn three, or more, we'll say our opponent's playing blue. We'll play Fear of Infinity. Uh, and with Fear of Infinity, that will basically, like I said, we'll keep getting it back to get cast triggers. It can't block, but we can keep swinging with it. Next turn. We're going to do Yavamaya, Cradle Growth, Overlord, win at ETBs, add a token, make... Huh. What? I guess we don't have... We don't have it everywhere? They haven't made the everywhere token yet. Oh, that's insane. Here. 
the token exotic orchards will be the everywhere tokens. And it does come in play tapped. And then we can swing at that to gain two life. Next turn, we're going to put in the Sparrow's Headquarters. Do we have the mana? Because that's black, green, blue, red, and yep. So, but do we want to do that? You know what? Yeah, we do. We'll cast our commander. And like I said, we look at the top seven. We get all, we put all enchantments into our hand. And I think the rest in the bottom in a random order. So, so far, we're only getting Copy Enchantment and Anicthia. Getting a doubling season. And that. Alright, cool. So, shift. I think L, 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 L. And we get these three to our hands. But one goes to the grave. I'm going to choose to put Enchanted Evening in the grave. There we go. So, for our next turn. Boop. I'm going to cast five mana. We'll leave that one untapped. We're going to cast a doubling season. With that, um, I'm going to attack with these two. Uh, on the attack, we're going to make two more copies. Token copy. Token copy. Wow. Uh, they do come and play tapped, unfortunately. Because I'm pretty sure there would be an infinite combo if you could just flicker it. Like a Deadeye Navigator. Yeah, Deadeye Navigator in this would be insane. Uh, now, you could do a Deadeye Navigator, Intruder Alarm, this, and anything that makes your lands creatures. So, creature, like if your lands would ETB as creatures, Intruder Alarm would untap them. And then you get flicked with this with Deadeye Navigator. Anyway, so that would be the turn. On our next turn, sure we'll play a we'll play a triome. And these are the these are the everywhere tokens. We're already flooded with mana. Um, what we could do is something pretty stupid, but I would do it just to do this. We'll do copy enchantment as a copy of Overlord of the Haunt Woods. And we make two more copies. So yeah, we're just going to be making lands. Which is really, this is all I wanted to make this deck for. Is to get this out and make a bunch of lands. That's all that I want this deck to do. Like, uh, my Chaxra, my Atraxa Enchantress is what this would do. Um, that, that will be going in there. Now we have five mana. Uh, getting Anicthia out right now isn't ideal. What we could do is one, two, three, four, do Perforos. And then we could go on the attack. On that, we make two more copies. Shenanigans! Let's go ahead and start over. Oh, this isn't a bad hand. We'll draw. We're going to do Rejuvenating Springs. Next turn, we'll do a white. Uh, Inquisitive Glimmer. Next turn, Triome. With Triome, Jukai Naturalist. So now our enchantments cost two less. On our next turn, we'll do a blue. We'll tap for two green. For Overlord of the Woods. And we'll say our copies of the Zagoth Triumphs will be the Everywhere Tokens. And then we can't do anything else because I don't have black yet on our next turn we'll do a reliquary tower we're going to tap two green we're going to do a enduring vitality with enduring vitality we could do white blue
green, black, red, cast commander. As our commander will enter the battlefield, we reveal the top seven. We are going to get those enchantments. So we, we're getting Mirror Maid. That's three, four, five is parallel lives, six, seven, three blind mice. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Um, the Haunt Woods could tap for mana. Um, what would I want to tap for though? Oh, I know. We're going to tap the Haunt Woods. We're going to do the three blind mice. Three blind mice will enter with a counter. We make a mouse token. All right. On our next turn, we're going to play a swamp. Oh, no. Uh, before we play a swamp, we're going to make a copy at a counter. We're going to make a copy of our land. Make a token copy. It will come and play untapped. And that's basically how we're going to start doing this right now. Because we are now going to ramp out significantly. Because uh, now what we're going to do is blue, blue, um, yep, yeah, just those two blue. We're going to cast Mirror Maid as a copy of the Haunt Woods, which will make a tapped copy. The Haunt Woods makes this deck come together because it makes basically command towers for us. And then what we can do is black or blue and a black uh, fear of infinity. Um, then what we can do is green and a colorless. We're going to make a Parallel Lives, which we should have probably done first, but it's a, okay. Then we're going to do a green and a white for Battle of Bredegard. Which, when that comes out, we are going to make uh, two white humans. Two one one human warriors. Like I said, this is turn six. Look at what we've done. This is insane on a turn six. Why we'll the counter? Because what this will do eventually is it will also start making us lands on the bottom one. No, because it only makes creature tokens. So we would choose these three and make the creature tokens. Yep, because our next turn. Oh look, we're gonna uh, we have upkeep triggers. We're gonna make another copy. Uh, this time and on that one we make two elves. On this one we're gonna make two copies of this land. So we're basically getting three lands this turn. Bop and bop, and then we're gonna add two elves, which are just gonna go up here. They're in the way. Our commander really does not do anything except for a flicker target. And now we have all this mana. We're going to make you come and play tapped. Uh, if we wanted to, we could swing and we would make four lands. Uh, we could probably swing with our commander. Swing with infinity. We have a bunch of stuff we could do. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for five color enchantress. Uh, Marina Vendral. I would say this is a card I'm going to be hunting down. Um, I'm hopefully too, because they have some of her showcases. Uh, I hope they do an anime version of her. I'd like to get that in foil. But, uh, yep, I'll see y'all again next time, guys. Again, the link for this deck list will be down below. See y'all again next time. Bye-bye.